Hi there, this is Dr. Evan Osar with the Institute for Integrative Health and Fitness Education. Welcome to this edition of Integrative Movement Insider. Happy Monday, actually it's Monday morning. Happy Father's Day belated to all you fathers out there, all you role models for your children as well as for your communities. This is a great opportunity to celebrate fathers. You know, my father passed away several years ago and as I was reflecting upon my father and the lessons he taught me, I mean, he taught me how to be a respectful man, how to take responsibility for my actions, how to be, um, how to work for what you want, you know, because he, he, you know, he came, he had nine children, he had six children and adopted me, my younger brother, my younger sister. So he was all about giving back and serving and he never made probably more than $30,000 in his life. So, you know, I, I learned a lot of great lessons from my father, really blessed to have this man, uh, you know, very gentle, kind man who loved life, loved his children, loved his family. So again, thank you for all your fathers out there and what you do for your, cho your own children as well as for our, our communities because we need men to step up as role models for children, whether they're your own children or the community's children's ad children as well. So on this edition of Integrative Movement Insider, we're talking about low back. A lot of your clients are coming to you for solutions for their low back. They're looking for you to be the leader that they need to help address chronic low back issues, chronic tightness, and even issues from the low back or generated from the low back that cause them issues down the lower kinetic chain, like the hips, the knees, and or ankle and or feet. Because remember, all the nerves that are coming out of your low back, where do they go? They're going down to your ankles and feet. For a, so a lot of ankle and foot issues, a lot of issues that we have with bunions and um, you know, neuromas and ankle sprains and foot stiffness and knee issues. A lot of that stems from what's happening up at the core. When we talk about the core, it's the thoracopelvic cylinder. So the thorax position over top of the pelvis that creates a relative cylinder. And we want to teach our clients how to align and control their cylinder and then how to do three dimensional breathing to help improve control of the stability. Or I should say control and stability of that thoracopelvic cylinder. Now, let's talk about erectors. Last week we talked about abdominals and why we don't do crunches. Why don't we do a lot of extension type work with our clients either? Because a lot of our clients have been told or they read, oh, you have a weak low back or they go to rehab and they do exercises like bird dog. So we'll talk about bird dog today and how bird dog can actually be a great exercise if you teach your clients how to do it well. But a lot of our clients, the ones, the same ones that go to rehab and go to their chiropractors and massage therapists or personal trainers, they come in to, to us with continual low back pain. And when I ask them to see the bird dog exercise, which, which is recommended for pretty much everything underneath the sun, if you got headaches, you got shoulder pain, you got back pain, you got knee pain, you got hip problems, yeah, do bird dogs. But, but the problem is the way most people are doing bird dogs is actually contributing to their problems and actually not helping their problems because it looks like a really easy exercise. But let me show you how most people are doing it. So what you're gonna see people do is they'll get down on the floor and they'll do one of these things like this and they're like, oh yeah, I'm really strengthening my back. But what's really strengthening? Well, you are strengthening your back or, or your client is strengthening their back. But unfortunately what's happening is as they're going into their bird dog, they're basically just rotating because you have to rotate to get your elbow off the floor and not bang your knee into the floor. Otherwise your knee would bang down every time you came down. So you already start rotated and then you hyperextend the low back. So you're basically teaching the erectors how to rotate and extend your low back, which is really not what the erectors do. Yes, they can do both, but that's not their real job. The erector's real job, the erector spinae, all those groups of muscles around the spine, their job is to help maintain the rib cage over top of the pelvis, maintain spinal alignment. Their job is actually not to extend your back unless you need to extend your back. So, which is, yeah, there's things in everyday life that you need to extend, extend your back, but our clients need to learn how to align and control their cylinder against motion of the limbs. Because most of our clients, if you feel their erectors, do they really feel like they need to have more work done by their erectors? No, their erectors are already on and acting, or I should say being activated at a high level. And that's why their back, if you touch your erectors, feel rock hard. Almost every client, regardless of what they come in with, chronic low back issues, shoulder issues, neck issues, hip issues, most of your older clients, especially if you, if you deal with the older population like we do here in our clinic, their back is like rock hard. They don't need more back work. What they do need is a strategy for using their erectors appropriately. So again, the bird dog is an appropriate exercise for a lot of clients, but not the way they're doing it. So the first thing you need to do with, with a lot of your clients is elevate them. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn around, so unfortunately my butt's gonna be in your face, so I apologize for that. But I wanna show you what happens if you don't elevate them. So what happens is, you're gonna see the line on my shorts, so shorts by Lululemon. 
Thanks, Lululemon. I, I do love these shorts. I don't get paid to say that. Just like the shorts. Now, what happens is, in order to get your your knee off the ground, you have to rotate. You can't get you you can't stay level here to get your knee off the ground. So you start rotating, and you see like my pelvis isn't level. And again, that's one of the problems with this exercise. So an easy way around that is you have to elevate one side. So I'm gonna put a uh, foam pad down. This pad works well. I'm going to start with alignment of the head, neck, and thoracopelvic cylinder. I'm going to hinge so that way I'm aligned and I'm going to put the pad underneath my knee. So now my knee is on the pad. My pelvis is level, or it should be. Hopefully it is. Otherwise, I'll probably look kind of foolish here talking about level pelvis, and I don't actually have it, but hopefully my pelvis is relatively level. And now I can go into my bird dog pattern and not overextend my back and teach my body or teach my core how to maintain this level pelvis, how not to overactivate the erectors. The erectors are working to maintain a level pelvis and to not allow my pelvis to do that. And I can work on hip dissociation, hip extension, and then hip flexion while maintaining a neutral pelvis position. So from the side, it looks like this. So again, align that hip and knee, hip, hip and knee, align that head and neck and thoracopelvic cylinder, hinge, hands go down. Now the pad will go underneath my knee. Now I'll come up, so again, I'm level here. I'm nice and controlled. Head and neck and thoracopelvic cylinder stays aligned. And now my hip goes into extension and now I come into flexion with no change in my thoracopelvic cylinder. I'm not doing this right here, trying to see how high I can get or how much I can make my glute burn. What I'm looking for is can I maintain this cylinder alignment? Can I maintain the pelvis aligned? Can I maintain that neutral lumbar lordosis? And can I maintain hip extension and hip flexion and not overactivate the erectors? That's the best way to start teaching your clients erectors how to work, how to use the erectors as part of all the core muscles, and that's how you make your bird dog a much more effective pattern that actually helps to strengthen the low back. But more importantly, it teaches the erectors how to be a part of that entire core system that helps to maintain the ribcage over top of the pelvis, maintain spinal alignment, and helps to detrain some of those overactive erectors and really teaches your client how to use their hip appropriately. So I hope this video made sense. I hope it showed you how you can modify the bird dog to make to make it much more effective and make it so that the pattern doesn't feed into chronic low back issues or hip issues for that matter. So if you're looking more for more information, this Saturday at 9 a.m. is part four of our four part series of two anatomy geeks. My fellow anatomy geek, Jaliri and I, have been presenting core muscles, the anatomy of the core muscles, how they work to maintain alignment and control of the thoracopelvic cylinder, and how these muscles, how you can effectively assess and train these muscles so that you become the solution for your current clients and attract more individuals that need, want, and will pay you for your expertise. So I'm going to put the link to Two Anatomy Geeks if you want to catch the series. We record all, all series, so again, it's over four hours. By the time we're all done, it's probably closer to five hours of content. Once the recording is done, we'll also get CCs for this information. So if you want to learn core anatomy, how it applies to your clients, because that's the most important thing for us. Yes, we want to teach you the anatomy, the biomechanics, the motor control of the low back, but it's more important to us that you understand how to apply it. The anatomy allows you to understand why you apply and how you apply this information, but the actual exercises and the process we take you through is how you apply it to your clients so you become that solution that your clients need for their chronic low back issues. I'll put the link next to this later today. So I have to run out right now, but later today I'll put the link right next to this video so that way you can access it if you're looking for more information. And again, keep being the leader that your current clients need, that your potential clients are seeking out, and we'll get through this stronger, more resilient, and the leaders that our community needs. Make it a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. If there's anything we can do to help you in your journey to serve your community, please reach out and let us know at helpdesk at fitnesseducationseminars.com. Dr. Evan Osar, make it a great day.